they are incorporated within the state budget that we receive. Um, in terms of the, the backgrounds of experience, it, it is a, 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 a requirement for us to do so, as mentioned on that uh, this appropriate comes uh, presented uh, to, to this committee as the council uh, in general. Uh, it is the council's own business statement. Uh, I did say at the outset that uh, part of this is, is, is it's important not just for the words that are said, but also the evidence that sits behind it. Hopefully what we've seen from the March presentation earlier, and hopefully from the colleagues from Brown Falls in terms of the FM report uh, and the state of accounts, uh, we've we'll seen some further, further evidence that that supports the, the end of the statements uh, as we make it. Uh, so clearly there's nothing that's contained uh, within the report that can't be evidence uh, at the end of the appropriate of this right. So I went through the end of the statements uh, in some detail that last time. Uh, I wouldn't have to do that now, but if, 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 uh, if, if I wouldn't have to take comments or questions on the report itself. Uh, so I would move really to item uh, six, which talks about the consultation. We've been through an appropriate process in terms of the chief executive's strategy group, in terms of regarding the protection of the annual government statements. Uh, Draft, as I said, was presented here uh, in June. Uh, our external audit colleagues will also have the opportunity to consider the draft and improvement statements and provide comments to us. Uh, and one more thing that we have introduced over the past year, uh, which I think it, it is highlighted in the report, is we do have um, what we call an officer uh, called the Government's uh, Committee, a uh, board of honor, uh, which meets on a monthly basis. Uh, Colleagues are in the group, so Mike in terms of risk management, uh, Mark in terms of, in terms of audit, etc. Part of that, part of that group. And the progress that we make, particularly based on the 15 items that were originally identified in the group state last year, which now, as you can see, have uh, 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 come down significantly. They were reported on a monthly basis to, to the relevant portfolio holder uh, who, who has responsibility for governance uh, and compliance. I would draw your attention just to just to, to one one thing, Chair. So, in terms of the significant governance issues that are now presented in front of you, um, there are now uh, five that we, we believe uh, that needs some, some further progress. And I've made what we wanted over the next 12 months. Uh, I would get, uh, finally say that clearly this refers to it's very backward looking. It's, it's 13, 14. We've made more progress uh, since since April the first. Obviously, that will be reported through the year and, and will be reflected in next year's final government statement. But I think in general, sir, I think this shows a remarkable amount of improvement. Um, it's not a one-off, uh, as can be demonstrated by the progress that they've made over, over this committee and previous committees as well. Um, I believe we are developing into a mature organisation. Uh, the good thing is, I think we're recognising and dealing with our flaws. It's an important part of the suite of reports that we have on the senior agenda and sits very comfortably if they come on site both PFM and the refining reports and hopefully uh, will provide a consistent tale of progress and improvement in the team. Chair, I'll close there and we'll be doing questions or comments. Thank you, Chair. Just a comment really on what's seen in the appendix one and the IT facilities. Obviously, last night we discussed the transformation of resources that were looked at set up a task and finished group to scrutinise this particular issue because it is a very important issue that cuts across the whole of the I mean, last year we had a backlog of issues at least, but we lost uh, facilities uh, and we see that impact again. So, we'd like to see that. Thank you. Any other questions?
similarly forward to that around the pension fund in terms of our findings for the council audit. Um, again, uh, this is in the supplementary pages. Um, starting from really again, the executive summary on page five, which is in the right order, um, which again sets out sort of where we were at the point of sort of writing this report. Uh, the issues related to the finalisation of the work are, are largely complete, uh, similar to the pension fund, the finalised plan management level representation approach by my CPU. Probably the most significant bit that still needs doing is, is the whole of the accounts, which once you've got a final set of accounts, we then put into a slightly different form, which goes off, off to central government. So that will be completed next week before the deadline, and, and we are hoping probably we'll sign off before the 30th September deadline. Again, in relation to this report, a positive report. Um, it looms on our financial statements, opinion work, our work around value for money, uh, and mentions the pension fund, which, as uh, Tom said, is incorporated within the council's account. <coughs> so, as at today's date, we are, uh, we are expecting to issue a modified and qualified opinion. Accounts were well prepared, a uh, few errors. There were some, uh, there is one. Uh, and then mentioned uh, in, in the uh, rear of the report around business state, uh, business rate uh, debt provision. Uh, but other than that, uh, as I say, thanks to uh, to Tom and Jenny and the team for, for the work they put into this. Uh, we have reflected in this meeting over a number of years of the past key issues in finance, and I think I think they're as challenging as they've ever been. So uh, so I thanks to them and the team. Uh, so we are looking to sign the accounts next week with an unqualified opinion. Just over the page on six, we talk in a sense around uh, where we were last year around the adverse conclusion. Uh, and, and if members remember, last year we issued a, a sort of two-part report, one which was very red in nature, sort of looking back on the issues that had led to that adverse conclusion, but also trying to give a sort of forward look to the changes in the arrangements that were taking place in the uh, over the last 18 months or so, those have come through and, and we've reflected that in this report and the next report on the agenda. Uh, that's not to say there aren't things to do, there are some significant financial challenges uh, and as has been identified in the government statement, there are still arrangements that need to be finalised and completed, but certainly in the time since I've been here as the external auditor then, uh, actually getting the report that sort of shows those issues, puts them on the table and is you know, agreed to be doing something about them has been, has been challenging in the past, so it is good to re be able to report positively in that direction. Um, as I say, on page six, we will conclude the whole of the accounts where, in terms of controls, we only bring those, anything that comes out of our audit testing to your attention and there are some issues in relation to IT further on. I just stress that there are that there control issues that potentially might lead to a material misstatement in the account. So, you know, a significant number being wrong in the accounts, and we don't pick up everything, but there are, there are a couple of things we will bring back to the next meeting, uh, which are referenced later in the report. So, in terms of the report itself, um, again, similar to the pension report, it goes through the key findings uh, and against the each element of the audit plan on pages nine through to, um, to 13, 14, just talks through the work we've done, conclusions we've reached, uh, and, and how we've gone about that, and, and make some assessments of uh, the council's performance, both in terms of putting the accounts together, what the judgments it's made, around its accounts and policies and estimates. Uh, and again, pleased to report that they are all positive. In terms of um, the value for money side, that gets picked up uh, later in the report around page 21, and just sort of emphasizing that the requirements that the Audit Commission place on us are to form a conclusion, and you know, that is a conclusion, it's a judgment that builds on evidence around two elements, having got proper arrangements to secure financial resilience, so actually managing finances and forward planning to period. It talks about the foreseeable future, but we take that to be best part of 12 months after we give the audit opinion, but obviously we're looking for strategies to be in place beyond that. Uh, and then have you got arrangements for challenging the value for money in its wider sense? Uh, and some of those arrangements have been identified on the agenda, are strengthening and some are, 
some, still, some way to go. So overall, we judge that to be positive, uh, and, the, and sort of rag ratings we've attributed to them are on, on the following pages. And the next report just has a bit more detail about how we've drawn together our judgments around, um, around some of those things. <clears throat> and as with the pension report, there are other things I need to bring to your attention around fees. Uh, on page 29, uh, broadly in line with where we were, if not a, a little lower than originally uh, for the audit plan. There's been some nuances this year, particularly around business rates because of the changes. In the past, that was a grand claim. Now we just do it as part of the audit and it's going through a slightly lower fee. And just to make members aware that we've done some additional work around regional growth fund audit reports. So, Chair, I'm happy to take any questions on all that. But, uh, Thomas said it's a positive report and uh, hopefully we can get all the opinions concluded next week and, and sign up for the deadline. So, uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, just a couple of very brief points really. On page six, um, under the section on the right hand side that I identified as controls, you said, however, we identified more than the areas where last year and we can be better spent. Obviously, as I think there's still to agree, we rely very much on the ideas and the communication and the communication perspective in what we do. Um, so I'd just be interested to know which areas of IT you believe most appropriately require improving. And the second one, supplementary question, if you like, on page 18, you mentioned the question of disabled and needed access. I think um, that we just need to recognise it's not only making sure we're signed up.
a sort of more detailed report in relation to planning for money. As I said before, we presented on last year's sort of, um, sort of ratings in terms of their down the breed. Um, and, and this is not something we'd like to provide as part of the Royal Commission contract, but we do it because we felt it would be helpful just to recognise the sort of direction of travel uh, and to, just to give members a bit more detail of sort of what we've made the judgments and conclusions we've drawn. Uh, at the very beginning of the, uh, the contents page on 41, it sort of sets out um, from three onwards the sort of key things that we take into, we take into account. So under strategic, uh, under financial resilience, we look at financial performance indicators, strategic, uh, strategic financial planning, uh, financial governance and financial control. And then on the second side, about right, your arrangements for achieving value for money, we look at prioritization of resources efficiency, productivity, and performance management for natural resources in the widest sense. So the, the report sort of details a position statement in, in relation to those. Um, I think, as I said, as part of the main presentation, um, it reflects the challenges the council is facing with the distance it's travelled, but also the fact that you know, there are still things to be done, and, and you know, that is reflected uh, in the government statements and, and the conversations we're having with the council. And, uh, Hopefully it will continue in the right direction, uh, notwithstanding those challenges. Towards the back of the report on page 51, uh, we've just flagged up some, some sort of key recommendations, which I uh, know management are going to come back with some responses to, some of them within the governance statements. So they are around some of the key indicators where there are challenges, uh, historical, historical arrears, uh, the sickness absence position, which is, is mentioned within the report, uh, and then the development of certain the FTFS uh, and some changes that go on around governance and generally around financial control. Compared to the sort of position last year and the year before, uh, in terms of um, from a vendor point of view, there was an internal challenge around this in terms of, you know, is this in the right place? And uh, I think we were keen to sort of uh, argue and evidence the, the changes that have taken place. So, Probably fair to say, um, the uses of KPIs of this nature is 
certainly in the group sector, group three, as a firm trying to develop the sector and make sense because we recognize that authorities potentially in the next couple of years will be starting to get into difficult situations and sort of whatever indicators, whether it's financial, uh, as Chris has already said, these are sort of a little bit after the event because they come out of the, they come out of the financial statements. Um, just to give some assurance that I am also able to say to Evan, there's a good reason why that's because it's yeah. where it is. So um, I was challenged by the ex chief executive Bill Hinton that they were looking at this. Well, that's the situation, so uh, I won't go into it here, but there is a good reason. So he's sort of in the broadband in the middle, um, and, and you know, it's, it's sort of, as Chris said, it, it's nothing to get too concerned about, but if it was sort of falling away and at the end of the scale, then uh, maybe there may be a, a difficulty in terms of you actually meeting your liabilities. In terms of the recommendations for particular blue loans, 12 bonds you will find in the 
Thank you. 